I like to work while I'm traveling, even on airplanes or on trains or in a car. This is totally changed the way that I approach writing and has made it much more accessible for me on the go. Hey everybody, if you're watching this video, that means that you use Scrivener or you're thinking about using it, or you have it and you're not sure how to use it. Regardless, we're here today to talk a little bit more about Scrivener. This isn't the first time I've done a video on this program and I doubt it's gonna be the last because this is probably one of the most important tools that I use as a writer. I love Scrivener for a variety of reasons. It has excellent tools for organizing your plot, for pulling together character cards and locations, keeping everything organized as a whole, as well as awesome tools for the actual composition and when you want to write itself. Not to mention ways to like export and fully format your book if you're interested in those kinds of things. But the best thing that Scrivener offers, in my humble opinion, is the ability to download it on an app on an iPad. This means I'm not tied to a single location to work on my manuscript, I can actually take it on the go. Which means I can work on my manuscript at any time of the day and any location. I can pretty much take it everywhere with me. This is really important because my MacBook is actually this big old 15 incher, which is really heavy and a bit of a hassle to carry around in places like airports or even going to a coffee shop if I want to get out of the house. Being able to take my iPad and still access Scrivener is so valuable to me and I wanted to take a minute to kind of look at how that relationship works between the two and how I sync my document across my MacBook and my iPad and work on the same document simultaneously. I'll even use this feature within my own house. Sometimes if I want to get out of my office and not be tied to my desk, again, I don't have to pick up my big computer and haul it all the way downstairs or to the front porch or anywhere I want to work on it. All I have to do is grab my iPad and I am good to go. So before I get into the nitty gritty, let's talk about what I'm working with. I work on a MacBook Pro 15 inch. This is a big computer. It is pretty heavy. It's an older generation, but it still works awesome. I really love Macs for this reason. They tend to go for a very long time. And my iPad was a recent investment and I couldn't be happier with it. It is the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. It can handle complex apps and it even can use Photoshop and other things like that. It handles Scrivener absolutely no problem. The installation of the app is even really easy. You just navigate to the app store, search for Scrivener. It should be one of the absolute top ones that pops up. Click on through, log in with your literature and latte information and everything is pretty much ready to go at that point. So Scrivener syncs through a third party program called Dropbox, which is actually pretty smart because it's not directly affiliated with Apple or PC. Um, so anyone working on any device can sync your Scrivener manuscript across multiple devices. So even if I had a Microsoft computer, I sync through Dropbox and I could still use an iPad with it. So you don't necessarily have to start with the MacBook version. If you don't have a Dropbox account, don't worry about that. It's absolutely free. They do have limits on your storage if you're using the free version, but it's easy to set up and get going. I've put a link below if you're interested in signing up for that. You can just click through and set it up really easily. Dropbox is essentially international waters. Everyone can work with it no matter your operational system. So let's go over how all this works with a little screen share. So once you get all logged into Dropbox and connect your Scrivener account, it's going to suggest this folder layout to organize things. You're going to have an apps folder and a Scrivener folder within that. That is where your manuscripts will be housed. So this is where you're always going to save your manuscript. And you need to make sure you've got the Dropbox program fully downloaded to your computer so it can recreate the file structure in your local files, which you can see I have here. It's the exact same structure. So anytime I'm working in Scrivener and saving, it's saving into that file. And that's important because this is where my iPad and my computer are both gonna reference files. I'm gonna warn you right now, Always set up a test manuscript in Scrivener to work with while you're trying to work out all of this syncing and understanding how everything works together. Because you do not want to be working with your original manuscript and then have something not work and then lose the document entirely. Listen to me now and set up a test document, please. 
which means today I'm not going to be working on a real file. I'm going to use my Accord of Mist and Fury file that I used in my last Scrivener video, just so we can take a look at what this looks like when you're syncing from one device to another. So I've got the Scrivener manuscript pulled up here. I'm just taking a look at the general file structure, but I want to make a change so you can see how that updates. So I'm going to add some new text here, but I don't like where it is. So let's move it on up to a different location. Maybe we're adding in some new backstory for Feyre and maybe just like adding some more information about a character. And once that's done, all I have to do is click save, make sure Dropbox syncs and it should automatically populate it once I open the app version. And you can see immediately when I open Scrivener in my app, it is asking me if I want to sync Dropbox changes. So this is telling me that there are things that have been changed. You always want to click sync now and you can see it initiates this syncing sequence with Dropbox and everything is fully up to date. So if I open up the document, I can see right here, there are the changes that I made to the notes on Feyre's backstory. Now let's say I do it in reverse and we open the desktop version after we've made changes from the iPad. This will automatically show me this pane here on the left hand side that shows me any synced documents that have been changed from when I last opened it on my desktop, which is a really nifty way just to kind of catch up on what you've been working on and make sure it's the most recent version of the changes that you have made. Now, if you happen to be working on either device and you're not connected to the internet, sometimes you can run into syncing issues, which we're gonna take a look at here if you ever get an error from Dropbox. So you can see here that there are conflicting documents. This means that you've saved it in one location and it hasn't uploaded. And essentially Dropbox is just having trouble rectifying what's going on here. But this is super easy. It'll create a separate folder within your Scrivener account that will show the conflicted documents of anything that has been changed. So once it's open, you scroll down here to the bottom, you can see this little folder called conflicts, and this will show you any text that has been changed and doesn't seem to be working with the last saved version of this file. It'll also, you know, time and date it so you can work on reconciling that. But I do have a few tips to avoid this in the first place. The first being always make sure that your Dropbox is fully up to date before you even try to open Scrivener. You can do this very simply by opening Dropbox on your computer and making sure you've got that green light from everything. Some other tips from my end, when I'm working on the iPad version, I don't usually do anything except direct composition. I'm not working on moving characters around or rearranging my plot work. I really like the desktop version for that because I can see everything in multiple panes. I can see all of my labels really easily. I can work much more easily with the desktop version. So if you're doing more complex edits, I would recommend using the desktop. That's not to say you can't do everything in the iPad version. It's just a little more complicated to get to and it's generally a one screen functionality, which is common for many apps. Tip number two, when I'm working between the devices, I always fully save the file, I fully sync the file, and then I fully exit the program. I do this before I switch platforms in any capacity. That means if I'm working on my iPad, I will save the document, I'll fully sync the document, and then I will close the app entirely before I open my computer and sync before I open it. You always wanna make sure you open that channel for syncing before you reopen the document. And once you have it fully set up and everything is syncing and working well, that's really all there is to it. As long as you follow those ground rules to make sure you don't have duplicates of files, it should work absolutely fine for you. This has fully revolutionized the way that I work on projects because I no longer feel like I'm limited to only working on a big heavy computer in one location. If I wanna get up very quickly and take a very light and compact iPad with me wherever I'm going, I can do that on the run and still have the entirety of my manuscript fully organized and fully synced when I get back home. And for me, that is really important to keep my inspiration going. I like to get out into the world and see what other people are doing. Working in a coffee shop works very well for me because I like the environment and the energy. I like to work while I'm traveling, even on airplanes or on trains or in a car. This is 
totally changed the way that I approach writing and has made it much more accessible for me on the go. I wanna know if you have tried the Scrivener iPad app and how that has worked out for you. Are you finding it easy to use and work with? What issues are you running into? Do you have some more tips for me that maybe I didn't touch on in this video? Definitely leave me a comment below because I'm always looking to adapt the way that I approach this. If you liked this video and enjoyed what I was talking about and maybe found it helpful, give me a like and a subscribe so you can stay up to date on all the new stuff that I have coming out. Until then, I hope you have a great time getting your Scrivener set up and I will see you next time. Bye.